powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Homes and property along the Yellowstone River near Shepherd are under a layer of flood water. The river depth is running right below flood stage, making for fast currents, eroding banks, and dangerous conditions for watercraft. And it's expected to rise even higher. The summer warmup is melting snow in the mountains, sending massive amounts of water flowing into the Yellowstone and many other waterways. Q2's Mitch Leggy was in Shepherd today to get a sense of the flooding. Every year, summer snow melt swells rivers across Montana. Yellowstone County Disaster and Emergency Services knows of two homeowners on the Yellowstone trying to keep their houses dry. But many more are seeing flooding in low-lying areas of land. A couple of homes throughout the county that access to the home might have been cut off or restricted. Otherwise, it's been just low-lying land and pretty significant erosion along the bank due to the high flows. The Yellowstone River's minor flood stage starts at 13.5 feet of depth. The water has dropped about a foot since yesterday, but it's expected to be hovering around flood stage through the weekend. Folks with property along the riverbank should take precautions. Just make sure that your, your equipment is back away from the river. Make sure your animals are in a safe location so that they don't get cut off or swept down the river. Stay away from the banks. Uh, we never know when those are going to collapse. And, you become part of that flow. With all of the lowland area flooding happening on the Yellowstone River right now, Yellowstone County Emergency Services personnel say that no one should be on the river this weekend, even if you have a hard-bottomed boat. Rescue would be extremely difficult for first responders if you did happen to get into some trouble. So it's, it's a very, very dangerous time to be on the river, even in a boat. I, I highly recommend nobody be on the river right now, at least through the weekend when the flows go down. Um, and, and the river gets a little more calm. Reporting in Shepherd, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. All right, thank you, Mitch. And he said there's no federal or state assistance available to flooded homeowners right now. Williams says this flooding isn't severe enough to meet the technical definition of a disaster, of course. Well, Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire joining us now. Bob, fl uh, flooding starting to be a concern in several areas this evening. Yeah, let me show you what's happening. Of course, it all started with the warmer temperatures up on the higher elevations. And look, there's not much snow up there. About the only thing that's left is maybe some mountain goats. That's about it. So what has happened, all that snow has melted, made its way down to the rivers. And as you can see, the Yellowstone River at Livingston, flood stage there is 10 feet. Now, last night, the temperatures dipped into the 50s. And so what happened is the river levels and the snow melting started to slow down a little bit. So actually, they dropped about a foot over at Livingston and in Billings, but we're forecasting to get into the 70s and 80s over the next several days. And so that means that the uh, river levels are expected to go back up to right around flood stage. And in some cases, maybe even a little bit beyond that. And not only there, also at this place, the Clark Fork of the Yellowstone at Edgar and at Belfry. Once again, they dip down by about half a foot, but they're forecast by the time the weekend gets here to get back up to flood stage or maybe a little bit beyond. What's going to happen is the temperatures will cool back down to the 60s next week, and that will finally slow this snow melt and finally let all these rivers just kind of get all this water and push it farther downstream. Russ? All right, thank you, Bob. As the dust cleared last night and early this morning on Montana's primary election, the attention is already turning to November. Well, Tuesday set the general election stage for several high-profile races in the state and some other not-so-high-profile statewide contests. Here's MTN Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison. Topping the ticket this fall will be Montana's U.S. Senate contest between Republican Senator Steve Daines and Democratic Governor Steve Bullock. The two men had easy primary wins on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, Daines challenged Bullock to a series of four debates. Daines also has a new TV ad criticizing China for the coronavirus outbreak and calling for an immigration ban. And a Democratic group came out with its ad, blasting Danes for voting in March for a so-called slush fund to help big corporations recover from the pandemic. In the governor's race, it's Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte against Democrat Mike Cooney, the current lieutenant governor. You'll be hearing a lot from Gianforte about his business experience as he tries to turn the governor's office Republican for the first time in 16 years. My proposition to Montana is very simple. I'm a business guy. I've spent my life solving problems and creating good paying jobs here in Montana. That's the message we started with and that's the one we're going to finish with. 
And Cooney says he'll emphasize a positive campaign, hitting familiar Democratic notes. We're going to continue to talk about the importance of health care, uh, having accessible uh, health care in Montana, affordable health care, affordable prescription drugs. We're going to be talking about what the need to continue to invest in our public education. In the battle for Montana's sole U.S. House seat, Democrat Kathleen Williams cruised to victory in her primary and says she'll offer a nonpartisan, pragmatic approach to problem solving. I've traveled the state 75,000 miles on my car, talking to Montanans in every corner from Plentywood to Derby and Troy to Broadus and everywhere in between about what they care about and how I can be of service. And this is really about hard work, leadership and service, not towing the party line. Her Republican opponent will be State Auditor Matt Rosendale, who won a six-way primary Tuesday. Like Gianforte, he's talking about business experience needed to help restart the economy. We've had a lot of our businesses that have, that have suffered, whether we're talking about Main Street or our farmers and ranchers. And my extensive business background just positions me perfectly to make sure that I can work with others to, to revive our economy. We have plenty of other wide open statewide races as well coming out of the primary. For Attorney General, Democrat Rafe Graybill, an attorney for Governor Bullock, will face off against Republican Austin Knutson, a former Speaker of the Montana House. For Secretary of State, Republican Christy Jacobson, the current Deputy Secretary of State, emerged from a six-person field and takes on Democratic State Senator Bryce Bennett of Missoula. In the race for State Auditor, Bozeman businessman Troy Downing won the GOP primary and will run against Democratic State Representative Shane Morjo, a Missoula attorney. And for State Superintendent of Schools, it's a rematch between Republican incumbent Elsie Arnson and Democrat Melissa Romano, who lost to Arnson in a close race in 2016. We also had a primary for State Supreme Court, setting up a fall showdown between Justice Lori McKinnon and challenger Mike Black, an attorney in Helena. So, get ready for some serious campaigning and the chance to make some real choices on the future leadership and direction of the state. At the Capitol, I'm Mike Dennison, MTN News. All right, thank you, Mike. And you can see the complete election results and rundown on our website, ktvq.com. Voters will decide on a $1.6 million mill levy for School District 2. Superintendent Greg Upham announced the kickoff campaign today on Facebook Live. The $1.6 million levy would be for the elementary district and cover operational costs for kindergarten through eighth grade. That levy would add $19.50 per year to property taxes on a $200,000 home. Mail ballots go out on June 17th. The election date is July 7th. Well, today kicks off the um, official date for the elementary levy. And I say that very respectfully. Um, we're not living in a vacuum completely understand the situation that's uh, upon us, uh, that the virus placed on us, uh, and, and want to acknowledge that and respect that, very much so. There really isn't a specific earmark for these funds other than operational costs. Upham says the elementary district had a $4.3 million deficit for this past school year. Montana state health officials reported two new COVID-19 cases today here in Yellowstone County. And in the last hour, we just learned that there are five new cases in Bighorn County. Two of the positive results in Bighorn County came as a result of those with symptoms, while three were asymptomatic and tested at one of the surveillance sites last week. Of those five cases, four are males with two ranging between 50 and 59 and two over the age of 70. The two cases here in Yellowstone County, a woman in her 20s and a woman in her 60s. Yellowstone County now stands at 13 active cases and 102 total cases. The state total is now 525 with 464 of those recovered. Meanwhile, in Wyoming, the number there now stands at 703 total cases with an additional 212 cases considered probable. 17 people have also died there as a result of COVID-19. Well, there's more information about an apparent murder-suicide that happened Sunday in Billings. Kyra Osman and Andrew Klontz were found dead inside a home in the 2100 block of Canyon Drive. Both victims were 34 years old, each died of a single gunshot wound. Police said Klontz is believed to have died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So far, authorities have yet to release any other information, including the relationship between Osman and Klontz. Uh, for a sixth straight day, peaceful protests continued on the Missoula Courthouse lawn. 
This as a second degree murder charge is brought against former officer Derek Chauvin and new charges delivered against the other former officers involved in the arrest and death of George Floyd. MTN's Katie Miller spoke to the Missoula mayor, mayor today who told us the protests are not a threat to public safety. Another challenging week uh, in the United States and in, uh, in many communities around the country. This is the sixth day in a row protesters are lining up in Missoula. And while there have been a few counter protesters, Missoula Mayor John Ingen says he believes the demonstrations will remain nonviolent. Ingen says there is a plan in place just in case violence erupts. Uh, there's just so much going on in the world today. It's really hard to know. In response to concerns that militant left wing groups will disrupt Missoula's peaceful protests, we're prepared, um, but we don't we don't perceive a threat today. He says he hopes these demonstrations will bring about change. Violence unprovoked against uh, any human being um, is not the business of a police force. In a city council meeting on Monday, Ingen said the city shares a collective outrage and concern over police brutality. We can always get better and we are going to do that. On Tuesday, protester Jay Matson told KPAX he does feel safe in Missoula, but knows what it's like to feel unsafe. When I turned 16, I got my you know learner's permit to drive. And two weeks after I got that is when I first almost got shot by the police. Matson says that instance made him feel like he has no control. You realize that your life is 100% out of your hands and in the hands of somebody else. Ingen says the Missoula Police Department plans to update its use of force and implicit bias training. I want people of color to know that they're safe in the hands of Missoula's finest. Ingen also made it clear that if any Missoula police officer violates policy, there are consequences. Our officers know that they're not above law and don't intend to be above the law. In Missoula, Katie Miller, MTN News. In a joint statement put out on Saturday, the city of Missoula and local law enforcement said they stand in solidarity against racism and acts of discrimination. All right, still ahead on tonight's 530 News, time to go fishing as Montana Fly is back on track. Looking forward to the future. That's coming up in our rebound report. And in sports, Scott shows us what's next for college sports other than football. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.